What's up guys, Rennis Rations here with you again, and we are checking out another massive 24 hour military ration today. This is a combat ration from the Armed Forces of the Republic of Kazakhstan. And I've wanted to review one of these Kazakh rations for a very long time. This thing is huge, designed to provide a Kazakhstani soldier with food for the full day. I think the most intriguing aspect of this particular ration pack is that apparently it has canned horse in it. So I can't wait to check that out. Before we do though, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up to to help it out with that algorithm. Subscribe to the channel to catch all of my future military ration reviews. And let me know down in the comments whether or not you would eat canned horse from Kazakhstan. Now let's see what's inside a Kazakh MRE. This Kazakh ration is pretty darn massive. The thing barely fits on camera. Armed Forces of the Republic of Kazakhstan. General military ration, menu number one. We have a very cool Kazakh star crest. And I believe this text reiterates what was on the other side, but in Russian. The pack does have a full contents list on it. Down here on the bottom, we have information about who packs the rations and the macronutrients in the ration. This pack does come in at 3,700 kcals. The packing date was 2022, and the expiration date is still a full year away, April 5th, 2024. So this ration is a very fresh one. Full weight on this meal kit comes in at 1.5 kilos. Nothing of note on the reverse. And I noticed there is a little hole inside of this bag where you can sort of peek at the internal contents. There are several different variations of Kazakh military rations. There are a few different bag designs and a few different bag colors but the contents all seem to be fairly similar. This bag does have a tear notch up top. So let's tear into it. Tearing it really didn't work. Perhaps that is a line you're supposed to cut on. So let's cut into it. This has a resealable zip lock. Look at all that green. Wow, there are a ton of crackers in this ration. Looks like six packages total, and these do all appear to be identical from the packaging. This is a canned ration. First can here appears to be vegetable caviar. Next up is a 250 gram tin of barley porridge with beef. That looks pretty good. 250 grams of rice porridge with beef. An equally pleasing picture there. A sort of dented can of beans with beef. And the can that caused me to buy this ration in the first place, 250 grams of stewed horse meat. This can looks pretty gross. It has some kind of nasty residue on the outside. I don't know if it's just dirty or dusty or what's going on there, but I cannot wait for my very first horse meat experience. That includes a pretty ridiculous eight 10 gram packages of sugar, two packs of professional black tea from London, two very shiny 20 gram packages of apple jam. I'm looking forward to see if this Kazakh apple jam is as good as the apple jam in Russian rations. And lastly, we have one pack of instant coffee. This thing is pretty bare bones in terms of extras, but the actual food content does seem to be pretty substantial. The calorie count is certainly bolstered by all this sugar though. Since we are taking a look at a 24 hour ration, I will be consuming this food and this food only for the next 24 hours. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So let's get these broken down into individual meals and dig into breakfast. So there is no kind of accessory kit in this pack at all. There are no eating utensils, but most importantly, there is no can opener. And these are non ring pool cans. I suspect that the Kazakh troops are probably issued can opener separately. Probably the same story with their flatware. There's also no included way to heat any of these items. So I will have to resort to boiling each and every one of these cans. Luckily, I have a P51 can opener. I figured it only fitting to have the beans for breakfast. So let's get this can open. There's a lot of fat in there, but that's our beef and beans cold. I'm gonna move this over to a shallow pan with some boiling water and we'll taste test some crackers and jam in the meantime. I suppose we should start the day off with a coffee. That is looking like a very fine powder. It smells pretty decent. That definitely looks like a spray dry coffee as opposed to a freeze dry coffee. The granules are very fine. Don't want to water it down too bad. So I'll add like five or six ounces of water here. 
I guess I'll be using ye old US MRE spoon for this video. That completely dissolved pretty much instantly. Has a little bit of foam. Now that the water's hit it, it has very little aroma. It's a little bit too hot to drink right now though. This ration is predominantly crackers. So let's get into a pack of those. They look very similar to Russian Rusks. Looks like it's six crackers per pack. They have some little letters stamped into them. It looks like a zero three or perhaps a OE. That's kind of interesting. These seem to be hard as a rock. There's the inside, a few little air bubbles there. They don't smell like much, not old smelling at least. Let's get our first bite here. Those are dense, very dry. They really suck the moisture out of your mouth. I like them though. They're a little bit toasty. They're very bready in nature. I think a lot of people would be off put by the texture these have. We might consider this sort of stale, but it's not. I've had crackers similar to these when they are stale and there's a big difference. These are still nice and fresh. They're just a super dense dry cracker. Let's wash that down with a little bit of our coffee here. Kazakh ration coffee. Cheers. Super hot still. Yeah, that tastes basically like nothing. Has a little bit of bitterness, but there's almost no coffee flavor to this. It's just brown liquid. Maybe our sugar will liven it up a little bit. 10 grams is kind of a lot for a single cup, but we have so much of it. I suppose we'll just use it. That is a very large grain sugar. Sugar, sugar, I guess. I'm just gonna put it all in there. Why not? And let's see if some sweetener woke that up at all. It killed the bitterness at least. It is certainly more tolerable, but that does not taste like coffee. It's one of the lightest, weakest instant coffees I've ever run across. With all that said, it's still not bad. This is very easy to drink, slightly flavored. If you're looking for a strong, robust cup of coffee. This ain't it. But if you just want a hot drink with some caffeine in it, this isn't too bad. Time for some apple jam. Now this is interesting because it feels all gritty. I've never experienced that with Russian apple jams before. They're very smooth. This feels almost like it's some kind of pear preserve or something because you can see the divots in here, almost like little sandy bits. There's all kinds of little grit in there. Ooh, that smells really good though. Maybe that's just some crystalline sugar. I wish they would have provided like five times this much jelly given the amount of crackers that we have. It's a nice amber color. I can see some little bits of plant matter in there, so it seems to be pretty natural. It's a thick gelled consistency. We'll try just this bit on the spoon first. Yeah, it's gritty, but that tastes awesome. Whoa, it is sweet. It is quite tart. Those little gritty bits just sort of disappeared. I think that's just some crystallized sugar, most likely. It has a very rich, natural apple flavor. Really very tasty on its own. Let's see how it is on a cracker. It makes the crackers a lot easier to ingest. The sweetness shines through, has that bright, natural apple flavor, and that little bit of tartness is very welcome. Man, that's delicious. I don't know if just jam and crackers was worth the price of the ration, but if nothing else in this pack is any good, I can at least say these were excellent. I just can't stop shoveling these down. It's looking like one complete pack of jam is just about right for one complete pack of crackers. I'm sucking every last bit of jam out of this pack. That's too tasty to let a single drop go to waste. Our beans and beef have been boiling away for the better part of the past 10 minutes. Look at all that oil on top. Tons of fat in this. Oh man. That's definitely not your typical breakfast beans. There is tons of fatty juice in this. That's gonna be good for energy. Looks like there are two or three different kinds of beans in here. We have these little small guys, and then we have these larger ones that look sort of like a pinto bean. And that may be even a different kind of bean, something along the lines of a kidney, but it's not fully red. There's at least two types of beans, if not three. Our chunks of beef are pretty small, but they do break apart very easily with the back of the spoon and I'm seeing some muscle fibers here. So it looks to be like a pretty standard roasted beef. Not really artificial or formed and pressed. Looks to be real food. There's a big chunk of unrendered fat there. I don't see any other vegetable matter in here as far as onions or anything like that goes, but the smell coming off of this is outrageous. It smells super meaty and savory. It's making my mouth water. Let's get a couple beans, a little chunk of meat, and a good scoop of that sauce. Kazakh beans and beef down the hatch. The beans could have stood to be heated a little bit longer. They have a little bit of that starchy thing going on on the inside. My lips are just slick with the fat from this. It is very fatty. The flavor is very natural and simple. I don't taste any spices. All I taste is roasted beef and beans, and that's it. That's a pretty good chunk of beef all by itself. Let's see how that is. Super tender, not at all dry, pretty heavily salted. You wouldn't need to add salt to this. That's a good thing since the ration doesn't include any. This is tasty. 
Nothing spectacular. It is simple, hearty food, and there's nothing wrong with that at all in the context of a military ration. Throw in a few cracker crumbs here. Maybe they'll absorb a little bit of that juice. And then we'll get this other cracker piece and load it up. We'll see how it is on a cracker. The crunch is a nice texture contrast. The cracker soaks up a lot of that rich, fatty juice. With all these beans, this meal has pretty good fiber. Beans also bring some protein to the party, along with the protein from the beef. And there's a lot of fat for energy, all things that are very important for military food. Look at all that gelatinous, tendoning bit on that piece of beef. A lot of people would shy away from eating that, but I actually like that stuff. Good to the last bite. Admittedly, that was not the biggest breakfast meal. It was good though, so at least it has that going for it. So I'll be back in a couple hours with lunch. Breakfast actually held me over fairly well, but I've worked up a good appetite. We are going to do the beef and rice porridge for lunch, along with our canned caviar. That's how it translates at least. I have already boiled this can for the main, so it is nice and hot. I'm gonna give it a few moments to cool down. While it's doing so, we'll check out our caviar. This can was packed in April of 2022, by the way. Oh wow, that was like under pressure. I wasn't expecting that. This one is not heated it's just as is. That looks kind of pumpkin-like. Either that or carrot. The smell is very vegetal. Has kind of a reheated broccoli aroma. Not the most pleasant. It's a thick, gloopy paste. There are what appear to be some carrot pieces in there. And I'm not sure where that little dark bit is. Let's try it straight off the spoon here first. Oh, tastes a little bit like can. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Has a little bit of a sour tanginess to it. It's a little bit sweet. Then that's probably come from the carrot that's in here. Flavor-wise, there's definitely some onion going on, but there's not very much seasoning at all. It's sort of a watery paste of carrot, probably tomato, and onion. That's what I'm tasting at least. It's not really meant to be eaten straight out of the can like that, so maybe enjoying it with a cracker will make it a little bit better. Get a nice healthy scoop there. You can certainly see a couple of those little black specks I was talking about. I don't think that's black pepper, but who knows? The paste is just so wet. I mean, it's almost like you made a carrot tomato smoothie. The cracker flavor complements well though. It is most certainly better that way, that's for sure. That tinny can flavor that I was getting from it is shadowed by the addition of a cracker. As a whole, this ration is very light in the vegetable department. So although this canned vegetable paste isn't necessarily the best thing, it is a welcome addition to the ration. Now let's crack open this beef and rice porridge. Check that out. The rice is not nearly as tightly compact as I thought it would be. This doesn't smell good though. It has a fishy aroma. Not something I would expect from rice and beef. I mean, I guess it could have some kind of fish paste or something in it. Who knows? The rice is a bit tighter compacted in the bottom of the can than it was on the top. Yeah, that fish smell is a little concerning. So there was a lot in that can. That is a sizable portion of beef and rice. However, I'm not seeing very much beef in here at all. We can definitely tell where beef was touching because it is very pink, but I'm not seeing very much meat at all. That is all jiggly fat. That's a mix of fat and connective tissue. There's one little piece of beef roast and there's a little flake here and there, but this entree is like 95% rice. Not seeing anything else in there as far as vegetables or anything goes. And I don't really see anything that looks like fish, but it is emitting that fishy aroma. Guess there's nothing left to do here, but to get in and taste it. Pinkish beef and rice porridge. It doesn't taste fishy. It's very fatty though. Just like with our breakfast entree, it leaves a fatty film on your lips. Again, there's virtually no seasoning going on besides just salt. It's plenty salty. Where the breakfast main was very protein rich, this one is more starch rich given that it's rice based. The rice has a pleasant creamy mouthfeel. As long as it's sufficiently warm, it sort of just melts away on contact. That's our one larger piece of stewed beef. Try that one by itself. It was good, basic, plain, Stewed beef, very similar to the beef that we experienced with breakfast. This is very much like an entree you would experience coming from a Russian ration. That big bottle of rice was really good though. This is not spectacular or life-changing. It's not an array of amazing flavors, but what it is, is simple and good. Can't go wrong with rice and beef. Since we have our vegetable caviar here, we'll put a little bit on our rice and that should provide a whole different dimension of flavor. That it does. However, I think I like the main better just by itself. I just had a very chewy piece 
tendony connective tissue. I'm pretty sure this mayonnaise has more of that than it does meat. A little bit of crushed chili pepper, red pepper flakes, cayenne, or even hot sauce would have made that substantially better. But as is, that was pretty good. And my lips are completely coated in oil at this point. One final meal left. We are having horse meat for dinner. We'll be checking out this Black Classic Tea Professional from Ahmad Tea London. All the writing on that is either in Russian or Kazakh. That is quite the fragrant tea bag. Give that some time to steep. We're gonna have both the beef and barley porridge and the stewed horse meat for dinner here. I have these preheated. Let's open up our beef and barley first. Wow, that barley on top looks a little bit dry. Not exactly what I was expecting. This smells a whole lot better than the rice dish did. None of that weird, funky fishiness. Down in the bottom, you can see a decent amount of beefy oil. It looks like there's a lot more meat in this than there was in the rice that we had for our lunch. They really pack it in that can. That's a big portion. It looks to literally just be beef and barley. Again, the beef is a stewed beef consistency, but it seems to be very broken up and it's a lot more evenly distributed through this than it was through the rice. And then we have our barley. Some of them still have the bran on where others do not, but I don't see anything else. No carrots, no onions, no other vegetable or herb to be seen. And finally, let's get this horse meat open. Oh God. Oh. It's squirted everywhere. <sighs> well, I got horse juice all over my new shirt. This can is crazy hot. I guess it's filled with molten horse fat. The top of the can is swimming in grease. Look at that. Stewed horse meat. And check that out, a whole bay leaf crammed in the can. That's pretty cool. I'm so excited right now. Check out this horse meat. Very similar to the beef roast that we've been encountering all day. However, these are the biggest chunks of meat that we've run into in a pool of oily broth. I see a little bit of black pepper on there. Of course we have that bay leaf, but other than that, the only thing that's in that can is juice and meat. Let's get a taste of this juice first. Whoa, that is salty and meaty. Hmm. Well, if the juice is any indication of how the meat's gonna taste, I think I'm gonna like horse. No sense in delaying any further. We'll extract a piece of our horse meat here and break that open so we can get a better look at the inside. It's a stringy red meat. It is very tender. It's falling apart with just minimal pressure. Looks good. Let's see how she tastes. That is pretty fantastic. That bay leaf flavor comes through. It is very well salted, but other than that, it's a very natural fatty meat taste. I expect horse to be a quite lean meat, so maybe they cook this with some amount of beef tallow. I'm not quite sure, but if you blind taste tested this, I'm fairly certain that 99% of people would think that that is beef because that's what it tastes like. I expect your horse to maybe be a little bit more venison-like. Mm, it is very beef-like. Now let's get it in on our beef and barley porridge or kasha here. Gonna start out with a big heaping spoonful there. Mm, the little pop that that barley has is really nice. It is salty, meaty, and oily. Every item we've run across today has had a lot of fat content, which again is paramount for energy production. It has a slightly floral, barley taste to it. Up until now, I've only really experienced that with Russian kashas, and that's exactly what this is very closely akin to. I don't think a Russian soldier would be out of place at all eating one of these Kazakh rations. So each component is pretty good by itself, but I think everything is gonna be made all the better by mixing these two together. So we're gonna scoop in a tsunami of our horse juice here. Really moisten all of this barley up, almost like we're making a stew here. All right, now we have barley and beef swimming in horse broth. Let's give that one a shot. Oh man, that is crazy good. Wow, those flavors combine outstandingly. This is among one of the most hearty and filling ration dinner menus I've ever run across. Now that we have the horse meat not completely covered in juice, we can really see how much they included and it's a healthy amount. I want another big bite of that horse roast. Man, that is good stuff. In the United States, 
They're not allowed to sell horse meat for human consumption, but it's not like that everywhere in the world. There's places in Europe you can eat horse, and horse is regularly eaten through a lot of Asia, Kazakhstan included, I suppose. It might be a little bit more dry than beef is, but other than that, it is a very close beef analog in my opinion. That last bite had a very gelatinous connective tissue part. I'm really liking the added flavor of this bay leaf imported to the dish. Very nice. I allow these crackers to soak up a little bit of that juice. So let's try a juice soaked cracker out. Still crunchy, but it did absorb a lot of that juice. I believe our black tea has had enough time to do all the steeping it's going to do. Give that tea bag a little squeeze there. Some people absolutely hate that practice, but I don't like to leave any flavor behind. Professional black tea. Cheers. Very, very mild. It kind of reminds me of the coffee in that it's a little bitter and doesn't really have much flavor other than that. But you can definitely tell it's tea. It's just a pretty weak black tea. And we'll get one taste here sweetened. That's a lot better. Yeah, the sugar makes it far more tolerable. Even pretty good, I would say. So the armed forces of the Republic of Kazakhstan have a ration that is very bare bones. It lacks in extras and side dishes. There is no dessert item included. But what this ration pack does have heaps of is very hearty, savory, filling food, exactly what a soldier needs to keep going. I'm so glad I was finally able to check one of these rations out. My buddy and fellow ration reviewer, Traversing Food, has a Kazakh ration review of his own posting today. Unlike the ration that we just reviewed in this tan bag, the one that he's checking out is coming in a green bag, and I am very curious to see what the difference between that green bag and this tan bag is. His video will be posted down in the description of this video if you want to check that out. Traversing Food is a fantastic ration reviewer, one of the best in the business. And if you love seeing the foreign military rations like me, he has one of the most comprehensive channels out there. If you like this video, please be sure to hit that thumbs up. That helps out with the algorithm and getting the video distributed out to other people. If you know someone else that might enjoy this kind of content, please share the video because that helps the channel more than anything else. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And let me know down in the comments what you thought about the video. I will catch you guys in the next video. See you then. Peace.